I'm gonna add to stream, Sirius and Jordi. Hello. Hi, uh, everyone. Yeah. So, well, very welcome to stop and thanks. Um, you can share your screen. Uh, we already said. Yeah. Okay. Is the yeah. Yeah, that's me. Sorry. I'm going to it's all right. Is that okay now? Yes. Okay. Is is it is your screen stereo? Is it right? Yep. I think so. Perfect. I cannot see because I'm on the laptop, so I don't know the screen. So. <laughs> okay, it's all right. It is it, 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 it's your screen. So okay. Uh, very welcome, and it's all yours. Okay. Good. Thank you. Welcome everyone from the Netherlands. Uh, so I'm studies with Alice, as I already said. Um, I'm going to present with your different link uh, how we deliver 10 million buildings. I was actually, that was my mistake. I thought it was 11, it's more 10 million buildings uh, for the whole of the Netherlands. Um, this is something that was uh, done as part of a project which is called 3D Bach. So Bach is the registration of all buildings in the Netherlands, those 10 million buildings I was talking about before. And uh, it's an open data set by the Dutch cadaster. And uh, since it's provided for free, we also have some uh, open uh, data for the whole of the Netherlands, a very detailed point cloud. And we thought we could combine them and create some 3D buildings. So uh, uh, the important concept that you need to keep from here is that in 3D city models, we have this notion of LODs. So we have like, uh, LOD1 and LOD2 as a basic notion. LOD1 is prismatic buildings, and LOD2 is buildings with true shape. And uh, for 3D buff, we created three versions, uh, two prismatic, one which is like for the whole footprint, we just have one uh, simple height. LOD1.3, which is prismatic buildings, but only like when you have big changes in height, then you have a, a jump. And LOD2.2, which is the buildings with the uh, slopes of the roofs and stuff, so a more detailed view. And you have this data set, and tomorrow, Balas Dukai and Ravi Peters is going to talk about that, how they created this data set. But today, um, we are going to talk about the 3D viewer part. So um, this is actually the second iteration of the project. The first version was released three years ago, more or less, and it was mostly a 2.5D data set. So it was basically just a lot of one and just one height value computed per footprint in the Bach data set. And um, so there was no really real need for a 3D viewer back then. You could just visualize things in 2D uh, with map box, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, some coloring for the values of the heights. But now that we had more detailed 3D models for the buildings, we needed something more complete. So we decided that we had to have an actual 3D viewer this time. And we started thinking, okay, what do we need? What do we need? Um, we, we, we should set some requirements because if you start thinking about ideas, well, it, it, it explodes over. So we, we decided to prioritize three things for the viewer that we wanted to build. The first one is that we wanted it to look good. Uh, so something that would be welcome for the users and people would just uh, want to um, really visit because it's fun, it looks nice. The second one is we wanted to perform well because in our domain, 3D city models in general, we've seen many implementations that they have a lot of data, they have a lot of features, but they're very slow. And I'm gonna talk about that like in a short while. And the third one is I wanted something that's easy to use because we understand that there's like a barrier of like how complex 3D data are to perceive by certain people. So, uh, and there's also a lot of details in the data themselves. There's a lot of hierarchy, there are a lot of information in, in the, for individual buildings in, in 3D Bach. So we want it to be easy to use the user and gradually introduce users to the data themselves. So uh, we saw what others did, and this is a typical example of things that you, some platforms that you see in 3D city models. This is uh, the 3D city model of Rotterdam. Many cities around the world, they create their own 3D uh, buildings or 3D city models in general. Sometimes you can have roads and other features of the city. But most of the solutions, they are pretty similar to this one. This is a product based on Cizum. Cizum, you probably know from already, uh, is a 3D globe platform for the web. Uh, this is a product that is enhanced a bit by virtual city systems and from a Dutch company, it was built for Rotterdam. And the problem that we identified here is like, 
Chism is very futuristic. It does a lot of things, but it's not necessarily the easiest. Uh, your funds of the of your machine can get crazy sometimes finding this. Um, the second thing that we looked at is Mapbox CL. This is an example from a Dutch company, which is called Herdan. They also did something similar. They created 3D buildings for the whole of the Netherlands, and they were experimenting with that as well. Um, I'm going to talk about why we excluded Mapbox uh, later on. But uh, it, this performs better, but it still has its own issues. The third one is uh, example that I wanted to show is uh, actually a very nice thing. Uh, this is called uh, F4 Maps, as far as I remember, something like that. And actually, it's a demo from a company. It's not an open source software, but it's an implementation of a 3D data from OpenStreetMap. And they basically build everything with WebGL. I think it's a demonstration of their services that they can provide. They're working with 3D graphics and stuff. And uh, it's very nice. It's very easy to use. It performs quite well. And we thought this is a nice example. This is something similar that we want. You just have like your data, just the search bar. There are no things to distract the user. And you know, it, because it performs well, it welcomes the user. And because it's simple, it also doesn't push them away from the platform. So to summarize, we like looked at these options more or less. So we had Cesium, as I said before, which is hard to customize. It's a bit bloated, so you have a lot of things. The problem with Cesium, it's a general purpose thing. It's supposed to do a lot of things. So eventually, for what at least we needed, it wasn't probably the best solution and wouldn't perform as well as we would like to. Uh, the second one is um, uh, Mapbox, uh, as I shown again. Uh, the problem with Mapbox is back then we found the licensing a bit confusing, and that was even before the whole drama of Mapbox actually closed sourcing their software or whatever. Uh, but besides that, and the fact that we didn't want to look down to ourselves to a technology that might change licensing in the future, which turned out to be a wise decision after all, uh, it's not really truly 3D. I mean, it's super performance, it's very well made for 2D data and sometimes 2.5D data. Like if you just put some data in a high value, it will extrude things and it will be very fast. But if you actually want to show your own 3D data, like ours with like these shapes and stuff, then you have to deal with 3JS, which is a technology for web 3D. And in that occasion, then you'll have to do all the things that we eventually came up to do anyways by creating our own solution. So we also discarded that. And for similar reasons, also harp torgier that was supposed to be harp. Sorry about the typo there. So we realized that a custom-made solution is probably the most promising way to go forward uh, because we would only implement what we wanted for ourselves, and we uh, we could tell it to our needs specifically. So this is the basic architecture of what we built. Sorry for the graph. I just well, this is the best I can do <laughs> by hand. Uh, but the architecture is basically uh, based on 3D tiles. So you have heard about 3D tiles a couple of times already. Um, but it's an OGC community standard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we, create, we decided to, uh, to create or to export all our buildings in 3D tiles. And George is going to talk into details about that. And there's a library which is called 3D tiles renderer, JS. And this is built by NASA. Again, George is going to talk about that. And this consumes the data. And then we built our own terrain renderer for 3JS because we couldn't find any. So uh, we that's how we provide WMTS. And everything is managed with 3JS. So the, the scene is uh, managed by this library. And then we used Vue.js for the user interface. And that's how we built our 3D path viewer. And now I will ask Jordi to present you for 3D hands. Thank you, Sadio. Shall I uh, take over the screen? Uh, yes, or you can just talk and I will just keep it there. Oh, okay, okay, let's do it like this. Okay, so uh, yeah, now after the introduction of the viewer, uh, why we chose to create one ourselves and its basic architecture, uh, we would like to go into. Bitmosidium, uh, which describes how massive 3D geospatial data can be streamed and visualized in an efficient way. At least that's uh, why it's important to us, uh, while maintaining CRS support. And our data is really massive because, uh, yeah, like Stelio said, uh, we have approximately 10 million uh, 3D buildings, uh, which amounts to about 48 gigabytes of uh, compressed data, 3D tiles data. So it is a lot. And um, 
yeah, probably many of you already know about 3D tiles, but maybe someone just uh, got into the conference or just a very, very quick uh, overview of what 3D tiles is. Uh, so basically it works like this. Uh, 3D tiles is built upon uh, GLTF, 3D graphic standard, uh, which contains the data that's actually visualized in the viewer. And the GLTF are embedded in uh, files called B3DM, which stands for a batched 3D model. So basically, you have a large amount of B3DM files uh, stored on a server. Uh, yeah, and these, these files are individual tiles. And um, whether or not these should be downloaded and rendered by the viewer, so downloaded from the server, rendered in the viewer, uh, when viewing a specific location, uh, is basically determined by the 3D tiles uh, tile set. Uh, and that's for efficiency reasons. So uh, the 3D tiles tile set uh, defines a spatial hierarchy. In our case, it's a quad tree. And as you can see in the figure here um, on the right, the tile set uh, contains children, which uh, denote uh, the nodes of a quad tree, and ultimately the content, which are the leaves. And uh, Yeah, uh, someone from NASA. Uh, yeah, we use it to visualize the data directly with uh, 3JS. And uh, what the library does is, um, well, it can, it traverses the tile set, so the quad tree, and only downloads and renders the tiles that are within view, uh, thanks to the spatial hierarchy. So not all individual tiles have to be checked on being within view, uh, which is what makes it so efficient. And um, in the next image, Telios, uh, yes. You can uh, see kind of an example of like how it works uh, like behind the scenes. So basically, this is the debug mode of that library, and um, yeah, we are showing this for demonstration purposes. So uh, individual tiles here are shown uh, visualized with different colors, and they are visualized together with their bounding volumes, uh, which are defined in the tile set, uh, which is what's actually checked on uh, if it's within view or not. So basically. Uh, uh, yeah, due to the quad tree structure, there are many nodes that can be skipped and don't have to be checked on being in view or not. Uh, next slide. So um, our quad tree is based on having uh, approximately similarly sized tiles uh, containing a similar amount of buildings. So in this image, you see an example of our quad tree. It's just an area in the Netherlands. And uh, And uh, we generated the 3D tiles data accordingly to the same quad tree structure uh, to keep things consistent. Um, but um, yeah, the current subdivision uh, in the quad tree, however, is, is probably suboptimal. And like, this is always like, uh, I forgot the exact number, 2,000 buildings, I think, approximately in every uh, leaf. Um, and that value is basically chosen on a value that sounds good, that kind of works good for us. Uh, it's not thoroughly tested, could probably be improved as well, but it works uh, very well. Uh, for us and on to the next slide. So our original buildings, they uh, reside in a Postgres database. Uh, that is where they are created in. And uh, from there, um, like as a whole in 3 dbug in our project, uh, we serve the data through uh, WMS, uh, WFS. Uh, we also export the data to CityJSON, uh, GeoPackage, OBJ to download. And then lastly, there's uh, yeah, the 3D tiles for visualization. So for the export uh, from the database to 3D tiles, um, we use an exporter called PG to B3DM, which stands for Postgres to B3DM, uh, 3D tiles. And uh, this is originally created by a company named Geodon, a Dutch company. And um, uh, yeah, it's very, it's been super useful to us. Um, what it does is it takes triangulated 3D geometries from a database, uh, generates a quadri based on it, and converts it into GLTF slash uh, B3DM tiles, and then together with the 3D tiles uh, tile set. And then, yeah, of course, you can also use the data in Mapbox and Cesium if you like. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we also forked this uh, this uh, this library uh, just uh, because. Uh, Just 
Tereus, uh, do you Wait want to... Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, we can't uh, hear uh, to Jordi, so... You can't hear me? Uh, yes, you, you can repeat the, the some... Okay, yeah, so I'll repeat the last bit. part, please. We list the last part, yeah, but, uh, but the uh, exporting, uh, the forking, sorry. Okay, excuse me. Um, so yeah, as I said before, we already had a pre-generated quad tree, so we didn't need PG2B3DM to do that for us. Uh, that is why we forked uh, this program, and um, we just read our own quad tree and um, uh, basically export uh, the 3D tiles based on that. Okay, next slide, please. I hope you can hear me well. For now, yes. Um, okay. So to further optimize the visualization uh, performance, we tested how compression could improve it. So we tested GZIP, Draco, uh, which is a library for the compression of three meshes and the combination thereof. And in our use case, GZIP turns GZIP was proven to be more efficient uh, than Draco. Uh, we're going to wait for Jordi to be back. For Sorry, Sorry, Jordi, we lost again. Sorry. So GZIP is more efficient than Draco. So. Yes. Yes, indeed. So with GZIP, it only takes about 5% of the time to download and render uh, a tile uh, as opposed to an uncompressed tile. And we think the reason for that is that Draco compresses individual 3D meshes. And um, our, yeah, our buildings are like geometrically relatively simple. I mean, they're complex for, uh, for a building model, of course. But I mean, it's not as complex as like a full uh, digital terrain model, just because all these buildings are disconnected. And that is why we think that Draco uh, works a little bit less good. And the next one. So we also created a WMTS renderer uh, ourselves, uh, just uh, to serve as a base map uh, for our building data, uh, helping the users to orient themselves in the viewer. And the way it works is just, uh, we, determine, we determine which tile is in the center of the camera and uh, using some kind of vision growing algorithm, we load the tiles around it that are in view. And uh, now next there's a little demo by Stelios. He will uh, show the viewer to you. And after that, we will have a conclusion and uh, a quick overview of future developments. I'm gonna try to find a way to do it without breaking everything. Yep. Okay. So, you can join me if you can just go to 3dbuff.nl. This is the, the viewer, basically. This is the, the whole page, basically. So we have all the information there. I think Balas and Ravi, they are going to talk about this tomorrow. But this is pretty much what you get. I'm not sure if the performance is slightly worse now than it used to be, but I think it's already fast enough compared to other implementations. Uh, what you can just move around and um, you're supposed to be able to move around, oh, yeah. Um, same as with any other viewer, and um, so it's a little faster. Um, you can change between some basically some basic base layers what that we decide for you. This is data that uh, Dutch Cadaster provides, for instance. You can change that. And as I said before, we produce three different LODs, so you can switch between them. And I think you can tell like how fast the, um, this 3D tile sender library basically works. Um, by switching the LODs, we just download the whole 3D tiles again and we start over. Maybe not the best way to do so, but it still works fine. We have also a way to just navigate to any place. So this is uh, my house, for instance, in Rotterdam. Um, and again, 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 you can see that supposedly how fast you can move from one place to another. Um, and then you can also select an object and you will see highlighted. And on the bottom, you have two things. On the bottom left, you can see, first of all, this little P, which is where the place where you just double click or uh, you simply tap with your phone if you use this uh, viewer. And you will see the height of this point and also the slope of the F surface that you hit. Apologies if you hear my dog barking in the meantime. Uh, so this was something that was asked, for instance, by the architects. Uh, to be there and have it was a nice feature of these videos. And you can also easily see the attributes of the specific building that you chose. Again, with respect to the easy to use uh, that we said before requirement, we only saw some things that we think they are really important. And for the rest, you can just click here and download the whole file 
and you can download it in CTJ, or Geo Package, uh, OBJ format, and you can load it to another viewer and see more details about the data themselves. You can directly go to the documentation. Again, this is all with respect to how we want to more embrace the data and help the user uh, identify how they understand the, the attributes and how they understand the data themselves. And you can also report building. So if you hang around and you see something weird, you can just report something and say, you know, this building is weird. Or uh, you can also report sometimes uh, features if you want for the viewer. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the whole thing. So um, well, for some conclusions and future work. Um, so for the conclusions, uh, we we concluded that uh, well. Basically, building our own things from the, from scratch is not really that hard. It took us like six months to a year, and that includes a lot of optimization, like looking for the data, how to optimize the 3D tile structure and stuff, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And um, yeah, understanding the libraries and stuff. Uh, and we were not like the most proficient people with 3JS. We had some experience, but not the most proficient one. So the second one is that 3JS helps, but if you want to go like if you want to do basic stuff, you can easily do them with 3JS, but eventually when you want to have performance, when you want to do things like as fast as you can, then you will have to understand some basic of 3D graphics like shaders and stuff. We, we had to at some point maybe with, the, with the, these things as well. And the last three points are about 3D types basically. For those of you who are interested in 3D types, the first one is the 3D types not really as GIS as you think, although they were built as a 3D GIS uh, format. Uh, I mean, it's not a fault of the, the, the format itself. It's supposed to be for more 3D data, while our data, in the nature of how they expand through the whole of the, the country, they are still too 2D. Like we just care about two details, one next to each other. And 3D tiles doesn't necessarily work this way. For instance, 3D tiles will never stop showing things because they are too far away. They will always slow things as long as they are inside your 3D view. So that means that, for instance, if you look further in the horizon, in theory, you just download the whole of the the country until then, right? We, it's, we can just down, try to download the worst quality, but this is like massive data as well. So we had to find some hacks, like stop at a certain distance from the camera and things like that to make things work adequately for us. At least that's as long as you follow the format as the library that we used. Uh, the second thing about 3D tiles is the tiling matters. So we first had a flat hierarchy, just grid based, and it was okay, but as long as we uh, incorporated this quad tree structure and we had a better hierarchy so the traversal of the tree would be faster uh, then performance just boosted so it's really important how you decide to form your 3d tiles even if you just have empty tiles like we do we don't really embrace certain aspects of 3d tiles like their own notion of lod's because our lod is different than theirs and uh, the third one is well as you already said compression well it can still affect big 3 dms uh, anyways, um, besides the, the fact that they are the GLTF. And then for future developments, uh, Ravi, if I, uh, sorry, Jordi, if I may say this, because you keep stuttering, so it's faster. Is that again? Are you stuttering or? Yeah, OK. Uh, I I'm going to go on with that because oh, okay, keep studying, okay. so it's probably faster. Is that again? Yeah, yeah right. just very quickly. So yes, sure. uh, we want to have a better download service uh, because now we are using WMS, WFS, but, um, and the, the way you go in the website also about how to download, download the tiles is not very intuitive all the times. Uh, for the base mouse, we use WMTS. We would like to embrace vector tiles, but that would really need a lot of work but the good product is that uh, yeah maybe we could release that as a, its own library for people to use with 3js we would be interested in seeing how to implement 3d 3d terrains because now everything is basically flat and it's just at zero well this is the netherlands not a big deal but uh, well in other countries that could change a lot have you your you things uh we have experimented a bit with conditional formatting so this is an example of conditional formatting so showing different colors per values of the buildings um doesn't work like perfectly yet, but I think we can improve on that. Uh, we want to improve discoverability, uh, like CO and stuff. 
And yeah, I think there's still some aspects that we can improve the performance even better, especially with respect to the base layers, as I said before. And yeah, last, uh, we would like to probably release what we built, the WMTS renderer, so you can add your own WMTS tile set um, and incorporate it into 3JS for your own project. Yeah, because now we have 3D tiles and then we have WMTS render point that anyone else could use. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can find the repository and the code there. Yeah, so if you notice any bugs or any improvements, then please let us know any issues if you just tried out the viewer. That will be very useful. Okay. Jordi and Stadion, uh, Stadion, thank you very much for your talk. And we have uh, um, Daniel uh, who says, uh, runs great on my desktop uh, PC, so also it's nice, uh, nice and simple interface. Um, we have one question. Uh, for you to answer, and um, I'm gonna read it for you guys. Um, it says, uh, if buildings, if buildings get uh, get updated, how do you import the updated buildings into the model? Uh, well, I say, if I may say, as I said, tomorrow there's going to be a presentation about the generation of the data. This was more about the dissemination and the viewing. Uh, but basically, uh, we are releasing um, iterations once in a while. So we released that in the first version in March. And today, actually, we released the second iteration. We just recreate the whole thing from the top. We then update one building per time. I don't know if you already want to add something. Yeah, no, that's true. OK. Thank it would be very good to join the presentation tomorrow as well by our colleagues. OK, thank you. More details. Thank you very much, uh, Jordi and Estelio. Uh, we we have a a, a little a little that I just see from from time. So we're going we are going to go with the next stop. And but first, I want to thank you guys and and uh, to say uh, everyone who is hearing us that uh, there is um, uh, an ice break. So uh, you can uh, see and talk with the Stelios, Jordi, Pyramid uh, over there and ask, ask some mm -hmm. questions maybe that, because we, we don't have time uh, here now. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for having us. <laughs> Bye.